Welcome to Seniors Today, a monthly program that is a voice for those 50 plus in Montgomery County produced by the Commission on Aging, of which I am a community member. While the show is insightful for people of all ages, each episode takes a fresh look at important issues by spotlighting seniors in the community, representatives of senior services and programs, and activities of interest to older adults. My name is Katie, and today our discussion will focus on older workers returning to work and what they should know. Now that we are a year and a half into the pandemic and looking to enter into a new stage, many Americans are being told to come back to work and young people are going back to school. We will hear about recommendations from the expert about job search tips and strategies. We recognize that not every adult, older adult is interested in employment, so we'll also look at volunteering. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Katie. How are you? I'm good. It's great to be back on Seniors today. I know you're a regular for us. I am. This is, my, right in. this is my oh, third sorry. appearance. <laughs> yes, it is. You know, people are going back to work, but not everyone wants to work. So we're excited to learn about volunteer activities from you. You're the senior fellow and program manager for the 50 plus volunteer network for the Montgomery County Volunteer Center. Tell us about the volunteer center and the programs you offer. Um, sure, thanks so much. I'm always happy to uh, talk to people about the Volunteer Center and especially about our 50 plus volunteer network. Uh, so the Volunteer Center is part of Montgomery County government. We are located in the uh, Office of Community Partnerships and our mission is to promote a culture of volunteerism throughout Montgomery County. We have over 1,300 agencies registered with us, and they can post opportunities on our searchable uh, database. And um, it's a great tool um, that plenty of people are every day, uh, county residents are finding great ways to volunteer. Um, what we found over the years, though, is that for some people, this works great, and especially the students who are looking to fulfill their student service learning requirements. But for some uh, segments of the population, and it, it's probably many of the people who are watching today, um, they may need a little help and a little guidance in finding the right volunteer opportunity for them. So we are focused on the rapidly growing population of county residents over 50, generally recently retired people, or maybe uh, people who have stayed home and raised a family um, and are now looking for something else at, at this point in their lives. They want to stay active. They want to stay engaged. They want to give back to the community. Um, these are people who have a, a lifetime of, of professional experience and, and personal interests, um, but they might not really know where to start. They may not really know what they want to do or where they can find something where they can find that combination of their skills and interests. Um, at the same time, the nonprofit world, which is always strapped for resources, can really benefit from you know, what we call the reservoir of talent in Montgomery County. Um, so the question was, how did they find each other? So about three and a half years ago, we started this program and actually it was with the help and support of the Commission on Aging, so thank you, um, to, to, to set up a program where we could do sort of a hands-on, um, sort of a matchmaker or a headhunter for those people who are looking for volunteer opportunities. Um, and, you know, we use the term skilled volunteers very loosely. It's not necessarily professional skills, but um, we're looking for people who want to make a, a significant contribution of their time and their talent. And we help connect them with nonprofit and government agencies that can benefit from their, their skills. So you said reservoir of talent in Montgomery County. You also talked about creating a community and a culture of volunteerism. So how specifically do you connect skilled retired and senior volunteers with nonprofits in need? So um, our process is really simple. We, um, anybody over 50 who wants to take advantage of this free service um, can fill out an application and send it to us. Um, we ask them to send us either a resume or just a, a brief description of their professional and volunteer experience. And then they will meet 
with one of our program advisors or with my colleague or myself, we have a team of, we have volunteers who serve as, as program advisors who do a lot of the actual matchmaking. And, and we take the volunteers through um, a series of kind of guided questions. And the goal really is to come up with what is your vo ideal volunteer opportunity. And then based on what we get, the information that we get from the volunteer and our ongoing relationships and knowledge of the partner organizations, um, how that, you know, what they have to offer, we try to, we try to meet that goal. We try to find something that's just right for that particular person. Um, and at the same time, we work with our nonprofit partners to help them identify new ways that they may benefit from volunteers that they hadn't even thought about. They may have a program that uses volunteers in some way, but um, they haven't really thought about other ways that they can use volunteers. So sometimes they don't even know that they can use somebody's help until we tell them that someone's available. So, Deborah, you know, you mentioned the term matchmaking several times already. Now, can you share a matchmaking success story with us? Well, I, I can't say that they ended up getting married, but you know, we at least get them on that first date. That's kind of our, our goal. Um, there, there have been so many. We, we've placed, oh, we've had hundreds of first dates at least, um, or actually, you know, relationships formed. Um, we've matched people in. We have people doing everything from, you know working as tutors and mentors or teaching classes, um, doing administrative work, um, using their professional skills in some way. Um, um, probably, you know, what we call a success story is really any time that a volunteer has a good experience and they're giving back to the community. But probably in terms of impact, um, we've had volunteers that started out doing one thing maybe working with a client um, working on a small project and end up running a program for that agency or serving on their board so that's really the where we consider the the greatest success hmm. deborah we have just a few minutes left but i would like to ask you a two-part question and sort of you know what kind of shifts had you had to make related to placement onboarding delivering services and volunteering virtually in the pandemic and then second if I'm unsure about the type of contribution that I want to make, what kind of questions should I ask myself? That's, those are both good questions. Um, obviously, everything has moved virtually. And we were just at the point where people were starting to bring back volunteers. And then with the Delta variant, everything is still up in the air again. Um, there are definite pros and cons to, to doing volunteer work virtually. Like for us, for instance, we used to do all of our interviews up in our office in Germantown, and now we do them on Zoom and it works out. We don't have to make somebody come up to Germantown, um, which is actually probably the biggest advantage in volunteering virtually is you don't have geographic barriers. So agencies can recruit volunteers from all over the county without people feeling like, you know, if I'm volunteering somewhere, I don't really want to drive 45 minutes and have to pay for parking. Um, there are challenges, though. There are challenges keeping volunteers engaged, that they may have felt more committed and more engaged with the work and with the organization when they were face to face. So they've done things like do virtual happy hours and text chains with volunteers. Um, and of course, with the promise that someday they'd be back in the office. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the questions that you should ask yourself is probably the same kind of questions that we ask our our volunteers, um, is there a cause that you're passionate about? If that's the case, then it doesn't really matter what you're doing as long as you know that you're helping animals or, or you know, um, uh, working in education or whatever it is that you feel strongly about. We ask people, would they rather be doing a direct service with a client versus helping an organization. And that's something that people haven't really thought about. What, your, what is your comfort level working directly, directly with an, with an at, um, maybe at-risk child versus working with the organization behind the scenes to help them? Um, do you want to have some flexibility in your schedule or are you looking for routine, which retired people, that's very often what they want. Um, it used to be, do you want to go out and meet other new people and have social interaction? But since there's less of that now, that's less of a consideration. But the, the general question we ask is, what's the most important thing to you? 
the work you're actually doing, like if you want to use your professional skills in some way, or you want to do something new, is it the who you're doing it for, the, the mission of the agency, or is it, you know, working with other people and sort of prioritizing those things. And um, mm -hmm. it's just good to think about what it what would be your ideal volunteer opportunity. And um, mm -hmm. if you can't figure it out for yourself, you can come to us. Well, Deborah, I learned a lot from our conversation and I know our viewers will too. In 20 seconds or less, tell us how we can connect with your office. Okay, so um, the website is for our organization, for the Volunteer Center is um, montgomeryserves.org. And there is a page on there for volunteers. You can click on uh, the 50 plus volunteer network, which will allow you to uh, download an application or you can send an email to 50plus at um, montgomerycountymd.gov. And all of that is on that page on the website. Well, Deborah, thanks for coming back on the show. And I know that you'll be back on for maybe a fifth <laughs> round. This is your fourth, <laughs> a fifth round. All right. Thanks for having me. Well, that concludes our program for today on older workers returning to work and what they should know. As you can see, the voices of seniors matter every day and in every way. We also want to give our viewers a heads up that next month, Seniors Today will be getting a new look and a new name. We'll strive to continue to bring you interesting and informative guests addressing topics relevant to older adults. Join us next month for 50 Plus in Montgomery County. To learn more about services for seniors in Montgomery County, please visit the Montgomery County Seniors website by visiting montgomerycountymd.gov senior or call the Senior Resource Line at 240-777-3000.